Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, speak to your people, Lord Jesus. Speak to your people. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just waiting for some people to tune in. We're going to get right into this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So praise God, praise God, everybody. Um, as uh, I had uh, posted up early, I wanted to do this testimony. Um, actually, early today I came across a video. Um, this lady was telling her testimony about hell. And, um, you know, I had experience back in 2013, I did not die. It was more of an open vision. So, you know, certain people are like, did you feel torment? No, I didn't. Um, and I did this video, but it was, you know, at that time I was still kind of shaking up. So, you know, there was so much more to things that I saw and, um, uh, I will start off with this scripture that I started off with in the original video back in 2013 when I released it. Um, at the time I was pastoring the church um, and you know, I did share with the congregation uh, how serious this was. And um, hell is real. It's a real place. When I say I had an open vision, it wasn't just me just in my mind seeing some open vision is like you're there but you're not inside but you can literally see it i was not being tormented i was covered by the holy spirit so i want to start off with the scripture praise god in jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10 and that says Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Keep and, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. So the first part of that, I really want to pay attention to. It says, cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. When, when I was at this time, it was 2013, and I remember before I went to sleep, um, I just prayed to God that night, and I said, Lord, you know, uh, you're doing miracles. You know, we're seeing people get delivered. We're seeing people get set free. But Jesus, I never want to be in a place where I get pride. You know, I, I, just, I just need more of you. I need you, Lord, to show me something to just keep me humble lord because i don't want to want to be in this place of being content i need you jesus i want you to show me something that i really need i really need this right now you know at this time people was getting set free we had people get baptized in jesus name people would come in we had ministers come in from different churches that would get healing right on the spot we had people get delivered from sicknesses, infirmities, and it was a beautiful thing what God was doing. But I started noticing it was almost like I wasn't getting prideful, but it was more like, you know, when you used to seeing something, you know that God is going to move. I was just at this place where I kind of felt like, okay, I know this person's going to get delivered. I know this is that, but. In the same time, 
I know the scripture says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say in that day, Lord, have I not cast out demons? Have I not healed the sick? Have I not raised the dead? All these wonderful works. And he will say unto you, depart from me for your works of iniquity. I never knew you. And I will say this, is that there is no such thing as purgatory in hell that was made up by the Catholic Church because it was a money thing. That you can pay a amount of tithes for your lost ones. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting y'all know, people. I'm about to share this and you can take it up with the Holy Spirit. But this is the truth. So when I went to bed that night, I remember Jesus. I went to bed and I woke up. It was almost like a quickening in my spirit. I woke up. And I've seen a lot of supernatural things, y'all. I've seen demons. I've seen angels. I've seen familiar spirits. But this night, what I saw was a, it was an open vision. It was like I looked over. The dresser was over to my left. I'm in my bed. And I look over. And it's like the dresser, like, it got moved out the way, like, almost like a scroll. Got moved out the way. And the wall like opened up. And I look and this vision was so clear. There was a man and there was this place. It was like a dim. It was dim, but it was like amber color, you know, red, like in, in pits, like a pit. So like a fiery place, like when you see how wood burns up. OK, and I'm going to try to get into as much as detail as I can, but it's almost like when wood burns up and the fire's going through the wood and you can see the fire through the wood. So there was this open plane and this guy just had this utterance. He had this, te this terrified utterance look on his face, if that's what I can explain it to be. So I'm looking and there's something that's coming out of this hole on the other side. And there was like this 12 foot long centipede looking creature. Yes, there's things in hell that it, it, it's mind blowing. And I'm looking and this thing came out and slowly and this man was just yelling, man. He was in so much torment. I don't know what he did on earth. I don't know what this punishment represented, but this thing came out and it came and it it devoured him, like literally devoured him. I'm talking about, and the torment would start over and over and over, and it would leave. Then it would come back, and he was screaming the agony and the screams of this man was just so, it was just, it was horrifying. It was horrifying, so I'm sitting there, and I'm seeing that, and then there was another part a hell where I saw people on earth, women that committed abortion, that they did not repent on earth. You know, and the thing is, is because the thing is, God wants, he wills for none to perish. He wants us to come to repentance. And I want to tell you that if you have committed abortion, I know it's hard, but you can repent. You can repent and God will forgive you. But these people didn't repent of their sins. Women were hanging from their umbilical cords in this place because it was so, it was so, the feeling that you felt, it was just a demonic, heavy feeling and the torment for them was just crazy. This is real. This is so real. And the thing is, is at the time, I really, I was kind of messed up for about a couple weeks after I saw this, man. I mean, if you look at the original video, you can see I was trying to hold my composure. My voice wasn't even the same. It was shaky because when you see something with you, I didn't even go through the torment. Just the sight alone of it was, was crucial. So... 
as I'm seeing that, they're hanging from the umbilical cord. And another part that I saw was people that committed fornication. Listen, y'all. I don't just post post uh, videos just to be posting or pictures about and, and putting statuses up about fornication. It's dangerous, y'all. It is dangerous. The Bible says when you commit fornication, you sin against your own body. So, you know what their torment was? Their torment was their private parts was being tormented and it would start over. There is no rest in hell. The Bible says that there is no rest for the wicked. And it was excruciating pain. You could tell that people was going through it. But this is deeper, y'all. This is not just torment in the flesh. This is torment of the soul, the unrighteous soul that went to hell, they did not repent. They did not have time. They had time to repent, but they kept sinning over and over and over. The Bible says, for if we willfully sin, that after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. And this is the truth, y'all. Listen up. This is not a joke. It was like last night, my brother Chris, he posted a video. And I've been meaning to update my video of hell, because it's on YouTube. It's been there since 2018, uh, 2013. And I saw, you know, I heard the brother's, young brother's testimony. And then today I come across another video. And the reason why I'm making this video, the Lord said, I never told you to stop telling your testimony. And that hit me. So this is an urgency that I got to tell it. The Bible says word out of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I can't speak for what they saw in hell. I can only speak for what I saw in hell. I was not in the torment like they were in the torment. I saw it. But the thing is, is these people that did these sexual acts, the adulterers, there's a place for the adulterers. There's a place for the, the ones that's in fornication. There's a place for the ones that's defiled, watching pornography and all of these things that they don't repent, there is a punishment, y'all. There is a consequence. The Bible says that if we re if we sow to the flesh, we shall reap corruption. This is no joke. Sexual sin, you sin against your own body and it's shown in hell that you do. These people is getting their private parts ripped off. And the torment would start over and over and over. The alcoholics was down there. They was drinking themselves and they was drinking damnation. It was like a bottle of damnation and they'd explode. And the torture would be over and over and over and over. This is not a lie. When I told certain people about this, they said you should write a book. And the thing is, I've been told that for years. But the thing is, this is real, y'all. This is not a joke. This is why I, I, I constantly talk about holiness. This is why I constantly preach the gospel. And, and people, if they don't want to believe it, that's on them. I'm called to be a watchman. Okay, I'm called to tell the truth. So I watched this video today and it really just moved me because a lot of things that this woman saw in her vision, I saw. There were people down there practicing witchcraft. That was transforming into certain things. And there's one. there was a book that I read many years ago where there was a lady, I think her name was Catherine K. Back, Mary K. Baxter, Divine Revelation to Hell. And no, when I saw this, I saw it for myself. God revealed to me and showed me in this vision that yes. So a lot of things that she saw was in, uh, is down in hell. So this was not some preconceived thing. This is my, this is what I saw. This is what he showed me. And I can only tell what I saw. The other part, the scary part, is the ones that profess to know the Lord. Let me read this scripture again. Jeremiah 48 and 10. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Cursed is he that do the work of the Lord deceitfully. You know, these people was preaching the gospel, false pastors. They were once on the right, the right road, but they ended up on the wrong track. 
And I'm going to go there and I'm going to show you and I'm going to back up things with the word of God. These pastors were in a portion of the hypocrites. There was a place in a portion of the hypocrites. And this is the part that I needed to see. This was the part that really humbled me when I saw that because I asked God, I said, God, show me something that's going to keep me humble. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. There were people down there that had knowledge of the word of God, but then turned against it and start doing that thing, which was abominable. The Bible says in Ezekiel, it says those uh, and even in all their righteousness shall be forgotten when they start to do what is that that is abominations. All their righteousness is forgotten. If they don't repent, they will end up in a portion of the hypocrites. He will call, he will cut them off and give them to the portion of the hypocrites, as Luke says. They they say in their heart that the Lord has denied, they the Lord has delayed his coming. And in an hour when they look, if not, he comes in. And the thing is, these people didn't know when they was gonna die. There was people stealing money. From, from churches, being deceitful behind closed doors, having affairs with, with man's wives or having affairs with, with, with women's husbands. Yes, men and women had their portions with the hypocrites and they preached the word. They preached the word. So I want to go to Second to Peter. Hallelujah. It's not a joke. It's better to not know the way a righteousness and to know it in turn from the holy commandment thereon. But I want to give y'all the scripture, praise God. Second Peter chapter two, verse 18. Verse 19. I'm gonna start there. It says, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. This is all in the scripture, y'all. For of whom a man is overcome the same he is brought into bondage. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the thing is, this is not talking about people who didn't know the truth. They knew the truth and they turned against it. Hebrews 10 and 26 says, for if we willfully sin that after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice of sin for sin. People, this is so serious. Verse 20 says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled and overcome in the latter part is worse with them than it is in the beginning. It had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, turn away from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So you had Catholic priests down there. You had corruption that was going on. God had these people. They had these. They went to hell. Understand nobody goes to hell blindfolded. The thing is. These people. Had people confessing to them. And they had idolatry. They were bending down at statues. They were bending down at things. And some of these people were actually doing what they were doing on earth. And they were being tormented. The torment would go over and over and over. The feeling that was down there, I could feel the feeling. I didn't feel the torment, but it was just, it was like an abandonment. They had no connection to God at all. Imagine you just being cut off from God completely. This is no joke, y'all. Y'all need to share this. This is real. I had a young man I knew, um, I used to cut his hair and he had a, he had an experience and I was talking to him and I heard that he died. You know, somebody else had told me that, yeah, he died and he came back. So I seen him and he came in and I mean, I just feel, I just feel the, the fear of the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. I see it. I see it. I see it. And I was talking to this man. I said, what, what happened, man? I said, what happened? I ain't seen you in a while. And I said, can you tell me your story? He said, yeah. He said, for a while, 
he didn't even want to leave the house after it. This young man grew up in church. A church of truth. Believing in baptism in Jesus' name. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. But he was rebellious. You know, he was rebellious doing this thing. And the Sunday before he died, his pastor was just, his father was a minister. His father was just praying for him hard. I mean, praying hard for him. You know, just praying for him because he knew what was going on with his son. He ended up dying the next week on the basketball court. Something happened in his, in his head. I guess his body overheated or something. It was something crazy, but he passed out. The ambulance went there. They took him to the hospital. His family was with him. They was praying for him, but he flatlined. He literally flatlined. And he told me there was no tunnel. He was there. Like, he was there. When he died, when he flatlined, he was there. And he was chained up. And he said he heard all these screams, and that's another thing. There was a lot of screams and horror in the voices, gnashing the teeth. When it's when the Bible talks about gnashing the teeth, that's what it was. So he was hearing all of these things. He said he saw people being ripped apart in different portions. He said he was like chained up, but it was like his family was there praying, and they was believers in the Lord. They they fervently believed and they prayed. And through their prayers, he got resurrected from the dead in the hospital room. And he said, if it was not for that, it was like something was moving where they was going to end up. He was going to be next in the torment or the sentence that he was in, y'all. This is not any joke. This is real. And after I told him, I said, do you mind if we, I, I give you an interview? Because this was back when I really start doing the YouTube. And it's so real, y'all, because some of the vision that he saw when he was actually in hell. Now, he was about to actually go through the torment. I didn't go through the torment. But we had some similar things that we saw in hell. And understand, the Bible says hell enlarges herself. Daily. This is no joke. This is real, y'all. This is real. This is not a joke. So coming back to me, God showed me hypocrites. He showed me people that was hanging from their umbilical cords. He showed me people that was being tormented for fornication. And, and you know, it might feel good to the flesh on earth. But if you die in your sin, if you die in your sin, trust me, that sin was not worth it. The Bible says he that reap to the flesh shall he that sow to the flesh shall reap corruption, but he that sow to the spirit shall reap everlasting life. And then this is no joke. So I'm seeing all of this stuff and I'm shaking. I just remember my spirit shaking as I'm seeing this. As I saw when I saw the guy, I mean, the first thing that I saw was already more than enough seeing a 12 foot uh, centipede. And if you want to know how I look, it looked like a centipede, but it had these spikes. And these spikes look metal-like. Uh, some It was a demonic creature. That's as best as I can say it. And this thing went through and it drilled through them and it ate them, devoured them. And like it was almost like a vomit him back out. And he was running in the same torment. And this is forever, y'all, till he get cast into the lake of fire. There were people that stole money and with business deals and all of these things, doing all these. One lie, y'all. There's no such thing as a white lie. There is no such thing as a joke. This is why I'm so serious about it. And, and I know that I'm around certain people that say no. And, and is it, you know, they say, no, ain't nothing wrong with a white lie. A lie is a lie, y'all. I promise you. If you die in sin, you will not see the face of God. The Bible says, follow peace with all men. Holiness without no man shall see the face of the Lord. The Bible says also, those that are pure in heart shall see Jesus. Those that are pure. I'm telling you right now, y'all, this, I'm pretty much almost done with this. But the thing is, yes, you you need to stop, praise God. You need to stop. When God is telling you, he's giving you a warning in the name of Jesus. He's giving you a warning and you must be born again. 
See, this is why I'm so against this whole sinner's prayer. Ain't no sinner's prayer, y'all. There's people down there that said a little prayer and they burning for an eternity because the Bible says if the blind lead the blind, they all fall into a ditch. The Bible says if the gospel be here, it is here to them that are lost. People say, well, what about the people that don't hear the gospel? If the gospel be here, it is here from them that are lost. There is no excuse, y'all. There is no excuse. We got to be born again. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's just true. That's the real deal. This is no joke. There is no such thing as a sinner's prayer. You got to have his body crucified. You got to be buried Praise God. You got to come up in a newness of life. The Bible says when you have been baptized into Christ, you have you have put on Christ. You are identified in the body of Christ, not a traditional baptism, y'all. You're not being baptized into a denomination. You are being baptized into Jesus. Hell is real. And this is the thing, y'all. If you have not been born again of water and of the spirit, if you are not repentant of your sin, because repentance is the most important thing. Repentance means turn away. Repentance means a 180, because if you do a 360, you're going right back and right recycling yourself back to the same sin. Repentance is no longer going back to it. The thing is, as we see right here in the scripture, it says, why they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. They themselves are the servants of corruption. They was delivered. How can they go back to the beggarly bondage that they once were delivered unto? This is why it's better to not know the way of righteousness. We're not talking about people that don't know. If you was raised up Catholic, you never had the truth anyway. You still have a chance, praise God. We're talking about people that preach holiness. We're talking about people that preach. I'm talking about the hypocrites. I'm not talking about the other sins that you will go to hell for if you don't repent. I'm talking about the ones that know the word. This is this is what humbled me. This is what humbled me. It's not worth looking at that man or that woman in lust. Because if you looked at them and you already lusted in your heart, you have already committed adultery this is the truth y'all this is as flat as it is there is no other bottom line than this this is what it is y'all this is the truth Jesus is real hell is real heaven is real everybody wants to hear about heaven but guess what Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven this is so real so if you are living in fornication, if you are living and in, in you're having sex outside of where life, repent. Hell is real. These people were being tortured in hell. These people were having their private parts pulled off, tortured, cut up. The liars also had things that was thrown in their mouth. They couldn't imagine torment of hard things being put in your mouth. And they're choking. And they're being stabbed. These things were like going right through them like spears. There is no peace in hell. There is no rest for the wicked, y'all. Church will not save you. The church building will not save you, y'all. I'm telling you right now, just because you go to church, just because you do good deeds, you know how many people are in hell right now that did good deeds because they thought their good day deeds was going to get them into heaven. No, you got to be born again. You got to live holy. You got to live right before God. You got to live according to the word. There's people that don't even read the word of God, but they go to church yet every Sunday and they think that that is enough. That is not enough to get you saved. This is a warning, y'all. This is a warning to let you know that hell is real. There is no purgatory. There is the only break that you get out of hell if you go there is on the day of judgment. And Jesus is a, he's a just God. He's going to let you know why you did not make it in, why you went to hell, and why you're getting cast in a lake of fire. I can show you this in the scriptures. 
where hell will be cast into the lake of fire. See, hell is not the final destination. Hell itself is cast into the lake of fire. It's like coming from, from, from city to state penitentiary. It's like being thrown from jail to prison on a life sentence. This is so real, y'all. So that is my testimony. And this, this is the testimony that has humbled me. And this is the reason why I will forever, till I have breath in my lungs, I'm going to continue to preach holiness. I'm going to continue to preach heaven and hell. I'm going to continue to preach the things of the gospel. And if you don't want to hear about hell, you don't really want to hear about the gospel. So God bless you all. But before I get off of here, I'm going to pray for y'all right now in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you right now, Lord God, that you would just touch your people right now in Jesus mighty name. Father, I pray that, Lord, that those who have not been born again, Lord God, that you would touch their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, that you would do a mighty work in their lives right now, Lord God. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, as you are calling. You are calling, Lord God, for those to repent everywhere, wherever they are at right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come against every spirit of lust. We come against every spirit of anxiety. We come against, Lord God, every suicidal thought. And there were people down in hell that committed suicide, Lord Jesus. Lord, that Lord, that they took their own lives and they died and went straight to hell in the name of Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, I pray over your people, Lord. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you will fill them up right now by the Holy Spirit, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, fill them up, Lord God. Touch their hearts right now, Lord God. Let them know that the power of your spirit is real, that, Lord, that you are calling every man everywhere to repent right now, Lord God. Lord, this is the truth, Lord God. Lord, you are bearing witness by your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, fame cannot get us into heaven. Lord, how much money we got cannot get us into heaven, Lord God. Riches cannot get us into heaven, Lord God. A record deal cannot get us into heaven, Lord God. Lord, there were so many people that had their own agenda on earth and they chased, they chased after the riches of this world, Lord God. They placed their treasures on earth instead of heaven, Lord God. They have made earth their heaven. They have made this world their heaven in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just come against, Lord God, right now, every spirit that has tormented them, Lord God, those that are in fornication, Lord God, Lord, take the desire out of their heart to give you all of their desire, Lord God. Lord, let them delight in you to give, Lord, give them the desires of their heart, Lord God, after they, after they desire you, Lord God. Lord, you said in your word, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of other righteousness shall be added in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Heavenly Father, that Lord, that you will move in a way like never before, Lord Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, that you will, Lord, touch them right now, Heavenly Father. Lord, those that have been struggling with sin and they no longer want to be bound anymore, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will move in a mighty way like never before, Heavenly Father. That, Lord, that you will break down and tear down, Lord God, every stronghold in their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are calling your people right now. You are calling your people right now in the name of Jesus to repent, Lord Jesus. You are calling them, Lord Jesus, to go forth, Lord God, to speak your word in the name of Jesus. You are calling people out of the sin that they are in, Lord God, that, Lord, that you may give them life and life more abundantly in the name of Jesus. Father, I come against right now, Lord God, every spirit of divination. I come against every spirit of witchcraft right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bind up, Lord God, every spirit of addiction that is over their lives right now in the name name of Jesus.
I pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, that you free them. You free them right now, Lord God, that they will repent in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, that they will lay at your feet, Lord God, that you will give them a contrite and a sorrowful heart, Lord Jesus, to, to, to return unto you, Lord God. Those pastors, those leaders, Lord God, that are doing dark works behind closed doors, Lord God, that you will just, Lord, Penetrate, Lord, penetrate, convict their hearts, Lord God, while they still have time to repent. And Lord, I pray that you will bring freedom in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that Lord, that they would not see this horrible place. That they would not go to this horrible place. In the name of Jesus. Lord, fill them up with your precious Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord, you said that whoever have not your spirit is none of yours, Lord God. So I pray, Lord God, that you bring freedom right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that they come to the full knowledge of your truth, Lord Jesus. Because you said in Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. And I seal up all these days in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to repent, y'all. It's time to repent. It's time to give it to Jesus. Your whole life. He doesn't want 50%. He doesn't want 80%. He doesn't want 99%. He want all of you in Jesus' name. I love you all in Jesus' name, and time is at hand. Remember, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world.